Hey, everybody. Yeah. Welcome, everybody. Uh, for those of you showing up for the first time, thanks for joining us. Um, for those of you showing up for however many times you've been with us, thanks to you as well. Welcome back. Um, this month, we are uh, discussing, well, we're calling it Pinot Royale. So expect uh, loads of uh, James Bond references sure. later in the Zoom. I'll be relying on these two here to do that. Um, and before we get started, a couple things that I wanted to mention. Uh, next month on April 16th, we're going to be focusing on our release of Rosé for the Bay, the 2020 release of Rosé for the Bay. So I'm sure there's some excited folks. If you've had it before, you're excited. If you haven't, uh, please be excited. You will be once you try it. Um, all the proceeds of that wine uh, go to San Francisco Baykeeper. And um, it's a great story and a nice tasting little Rosé. Um, made by this guy here. Um, <clears throat> so uh, the, today we've got three different Pinot Noirs all off our Poseidon Vineyard. Um, and I suppose I'll tell you a little bit about the first one. And I, before I do, uh, I'm gonna suggest that you uh, taste these as you see fit. Don't wait for us. Um, <laughs> oh, I got commentary already. Um, don't wait for us. Uh, please feel free to pop that Pejgo if that's, the, if that's what you're gonna do. Or if you're opening one of the Pinots, um, have at. Uh, this Zoom will improve with alcohol consumption. <laughs> Should we just do a general disclaimer that it has been a long week? Uh, I hope you all had a long week or a short week, but it's Friday afternoon. We've been enjoying ourselves, and Douglas's dog, Gigi, is right in front of us staring at us. So if we break out in uncontrolled laughter, it's because the dog is staring us down. She's, so. di she's directing. Yeah, she's she's directing. a 120 pound dog sitting it's, in yeah. front of us. 45. Very large, very large. 145. Yeah. 145. Yeah. Wow. yeah. This is a low budget production, so <laughs> we need canines to do some of the work. JJ's so, yeah. got a pr production assistant I today. I digress, but it's wonderful to see you. It's Friday afternoon, so I hope you guys have a great time and we'll have some fun. Yeah. Join in the spirit. Okay. Anyway. On that note, uh, the first Pinot is a, a pet nat, a petalant natural uh, that, um, that we did out of 2020 Pinot Noir grapes. Um, <clears throat> and so it's a, a fizzy little number. It's basically a, a, a sparkling rosé. Um, the process is actually older than um, the traditional process for making champagne, method champenoise or method traditionnel, um, in that the, uh, the juice is uh, fermented to, um, not quite dry. It has, um, I want to say it's six grams per liter. That's the number that's sticking in my head. And then um, at that point, um, a little bit of uh, yeast is added to the, to the bottle when we bottle it and capped with a, with a crown cap. And the uh, yeast then eats the remaining residual sugar. Yes, thank you, Alex, for the smooshed crown cap. Um, and the yeast eats that remaining uh, well, residual sugar. It doesn't eat it. Well, we like the term. Okay, it metabolizes. <laughs> thank you. Is there a wine maker? There's a winemaker here. Oh yeah. Why am I doing this? Um, and in that process, uh, the release CO2 is trapped uh, in the bottle, and thus uh, we get a little uh, effervescence. So <clears throat> it is about half as uh, as fizzy as a as a champagne or a sparkling wine would be. Um, and in my opinion, it's uh, meant to pair with flip flops and a back porch. So um, it's perfect for this great weather that we're getting right now. And we're hoping that uh, we have enough of it that it'll get us through the summer. So that's probably about all I need to say about that wine. Um, especially if you have a bottle in front of you, I highly recommend that you pour some and um, sip along as uh, we keep talking. And it's from the rabbit hole. I think that's worth yeah. saying. And this is the second uh, wine that we released out of the rabbit hole. So the first was the Petit Syrah, which was picked by Douglas and the tasting room staff. Casey, who's right over there in our tasting room staff. Um, and Mary, yeah, who's, and, Mary. Uh, and uh, Leah, if Leah's on this Zoom yep. as well, yep. our wine club team as well. We're part of both the harvesting as well as the, the bottling and the labeling process for um, for both the Petit Syrah yep. as well as uh, as well as well the, the Pinot here. So they did all the work and this is the second wine. So it's come out, the first wine to go out in the club shipment. So part of your spring release, if you're in the club, uh, you got the, the Pejga, Pinot Pejga. We've got two other cool wines coming out in May. So next month is Rosé, Earth Day, and the following month are the last two rabbit holes. Right. I, I should mention this wine is also available if you're not in the club. It's not a wine club only wine. But, you know, if you're, if you're looking to join, we're not going to stop you. Please feel free to come on board. Um, 
with that in mind, yes, Alex. Alex just one question. little note on uh, Petnat wine. Uh, if it's your first time having it, don't be alarmed. There will be, because it is a bottle fermentation, you're going to see it get a little bit of a sediment at the bottom. Totally natural. All it is is yeast, uh, yeast hulls, basically. And, <clears throat> and some of the wine, natural wine sediment that settles down to the bottom. And people actually ask oftentimes, and you'll see all the other rabbit hole wines too, is should you drink that? Should you? It's not going to do any harm to you, but think of like a kombucha or something like yeah. that that has sediment in it. Yeah. You, some people shake it up and drink it all. Some people let it settle and so it's don't drink it. Your choice. It's your choice. Yeah. It is kind of tasty. It's worth at least like putting your finger in and dabbing and tasting it. See if you like it. My recommendation yeah. is to drink the first one, clarify it, let, let it settle on the first one, and then get adventurous with the second bottle. <laughs> don't shake too hard. <laughs> Is this the shake and not stir? Oh, ah, yes, Casino Royale. Right. There you go. So there's the first reference reference. ones. And um, if you get all the references, there'll be a contest at the end. There's going to be a prize. So. I was going to say, I, I recommend, um, there's a couple of things that I should have mentioned about our chat. Um, I recommend slipping uh, Casino Royale references into the chat, and JJ oh, will lob them up. Idea. Yeah, points for the best one. All, the best one gets a bottle. That's I'm just going to say that right yeah. now. The best one gets a bottle. And then the other thing I was going to say is please use the chat to... Um, pitch us questions. If you have questions about anything along the way of what we're talking about here tonight, um, uh, JJ will, will toss them up to us if you put them in the chat and we'd be happy to answer them. It makes it a lot more fun when this is interactive. Obviously we're sitting in our cellar, which is nice and cool and comfortable, but it's not the same as being there with you. So um, the more that you want to interact with us, the more fun it is for us and hopefully for you as well. So uh, speaking of which, we've got two Pinots that have just um, uh, they've just been released, these 2019s, and I can't wait to turn it over to Alex to um, tell us about them because there's lots of new fun kind of stuff that, that I think uh, you will enjoy hearing about. Alex, take it away. All right. So we've got a couple pictures, by the way. Did you want to... Oh, Ooh, yeah, yeah, pictures, pictures. pictures. Huh? We have pictures? pictures? We have some nice pictures. What do we have? Took some nice pictures of the vineyard of, I guess that was this last fall. A mm -hmm. couple new pictures, which we think are quite beautiful. Oh, man. Uh, it's gorgeous, right? This is the view of Poseidon. Poseidon this is planted by uh, our father, my father, and my brother Peter's father. Oops, sorry, Gigi. Oh, there's the dog. I almost stepped on <laughs> it. In 1972, this is right at the edge of San Pablo Bay. If you can see the Napa Marina right there, so you can take a boat right up to this vineyard and walk onto it. And Alex, why does that make a difference? And tell us about Pinos. Why no there's being this. Or just area. tell us about the Pinos. I mean, look at that. You're so close to the uh, uh, San Pablo Bay. I mean, we can I literally walk off the vineyard. Uh, onto uh, a boat in the marina and sail down into San Pablo Bay and eventually so San Francisco sunset, Bay. Right. That's right. Yeah. Um, and what that means is cool climate, uh, foggy mornings, cool evenings, but very warm afternoons because you're in the Napa, the Napa Valley. Um, and great terroir, great terrain, great temperature for Chardonnay and Pinot Noir. That's all we grow down there. Um, and so we're showing you our Pinot Noirs today. Two of our wines that we've had for decades now are our estate Pinot Noir and the bench uh, Pinot Noir as well. Um, Should yeah. we have some estate? Yeah, let's try some of these things. Douglas, I don't yeah, want to drop yeah, some of shoes. Here we go. <laughs> I'll be back. So, so there's got to be a Bond reference in there. <laughs> yeah, uh, Arpad's going to tell us a little bit more about the new packaging, the new label. We have a new bottle. Um, it's kind of representing uh, a new. Thank you. Uh, a new phase in the, I mean, I guess like the uh, style, styling of this Pinot, of our Pinot Noirs. Um, our estate Pinot Noir is, has always been off certain blocks of, or a few different blocks of, uh, off of Poseidon Vineyard. Uh, this year it's no different, uh, but it's a different mix of clones. We've got Martini clone in here and some Dijon 115, yeah, if that makes any sense to anyone. Probably not until you guys. So. It sounds like a Bond, uh, a, a, a Bond <laughs> villain. The one exactly. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I'm trying. I'm gonna. I'm gonna get one. One of these is gonna hit. I'm telling you. <laughs> so you're making me kind of crazy. Hey, hey, you guys. Yes. Um, how do three? How do three wine guys bond over wine? Oh, oh there we go. How do three wine guys bond over wine? Oh, oh. a bottle for that customer. Oh. You heard it. You heard it. Excellent. Thank you. Well done. Well done. Mm. How do we bond over? <laughs> exactly. We're doing it right now, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Why? The question is, why do we bond over Pinot? What is oh, it about why? Pinot? Well, I don't know if that was the question, but what is about Pinot 
that makes people really because there's a there's an adage in the industry that says you start out in big heavy zins and then you move you know other big red wines and eventually you're gonna end up in burgundy like if you drink wine long enough and you if you make enough money you're gonna buy these old burgundies and why is that alex do you know do you have a sense why do but so part, many people... part of the reason i got into winemaking over 20 years ago was this pursuit of pinot noir it was like the everyone talked about how like uh cerebral a wine it is and it's not just bang like in your face sweet and delicious and easy drinking Pinot Noirs have so many different styles um the way different winemakers make them but um it's all they're always the best ones are usually more delicate um, nuanced. nuanced the color is lighter it's not a you know not a Zinfandel basically and so it takes a little bit more experience to know and love your Pinot Noirs um but yeah i mean i and so the for me the pursuit of trying to make a great pinot noir has always been there that's always like one of the it's goals. like the holy grail, yeah, the holy grail like for it's a wine thing that's yeah. very difficult to get to you can insert a uh, sideways reference here if anyone's seen that movie <laughs> um it's interesting because uh it is just there's a lot of pinots in california i mean if you were to characterize pinot noir in california in the west coast the style in California has been to make it more and more juicy and more yeah. sort of fruit forward and sort of what they call big. So I'm not going to historically, name, yeah. historically, and I'm not going to name any brands. They may or may not start with the letter name M. them. M, <laughs> M as in, not as in you all. Anyway, but they, they're just very fruit forward and there's a lot of, and, and I think I would say that our Pinot is a little bit more earthy, right? And a little bit more yeah. strained that way. Maybe a little bit more Oregonian, maybe a little bit more, just a little more savory. And I so, feel like with the new, with the new, with this new vintage 2019, we're moving even more so in that path um, of letting the fruit express itself and not using so much either winemaking technique or too much oak to blanket that, which historically makes a really nice wine, which we've done in the past, but uh, I think the future is about, uh, at least the near future, is about letting fruit express itself, getting really the sense of the terroir, that cool climate, the earthiness of Pinot Noir, um, the complexity, all the things that drew us into it in the first place. You know? Although I would say that the, that the 19s in particular, they're, both of them, although they're different, feel brighter, fresher, um, I like to say modern, but um, that's, I think that that's a contemporary swing, you know, that people are our palates are really uh, gravitating to that brighter acidity. And with that come, you know, higher aromatics. And, and it's there, those parts of Pinot Noir that are fun are sort of shining as a result. You know, they're not like deep and brooding and super intellectual. They're kind of more on the, not on the surface in a superficial way, but they are it's like accessible. a cat. They're like cats, really. They're accessible. They're like cats, right? <laughs> like cats. Yeah, yeah, like a cat. Like cat so versus, it, a, it's, versus a lab. Well, no, I was just thinking, yeah, I was just thinking about Labrador. your A your Pinot Noir is like a cat. Well, I was just thinking about your comment that um, that if you put too much oak on it or you do other things, <clears throat> it, it hides those things. Yeah. And you want to give it space. Like you give a cat space and it comes to you. You don't go to it. You can't call it. It just, you know, you put a bowl of milk out, it comes. And so there's this sort of sense of like, how do you tease out what it's supposed to be without um, without suffocating. Open, yeah, yeah, perfect analogy. Yeah, yeah. And part of that winemaking, actually, instead of using uh, purely small oak barrels that we've done traditionally, you know, the 60 gallon barrels, that, that, like these guys right here in front of us, um, we're starting to move into making Pinot Noir and more of these big casks. Um, these are our yes. signature Kadar hun Hungarian uh, oak, uh, but they are casks, they're uh, about a thousand gallon Vessels, these ovals. I, you're um, the winemaker, you and yeah. you and others. But it's always was that a statement or a question? <laughs> that was. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh. But it's a good question. So it is interesting. We, and Peter probably talked about this last time. But mm -hmm. our, the, the the heritage of our cooperage um, is in large cask production. So in the Carpathian Basin, that's uh, effectively both from the southern part, which is Italy, uh, and obviously to the to the north and to the uh, west, Germany they would traditionally make wine in large casks. So it wasn't, they didn't start making Burgundy and, and Bordeaux barrels, which are the small barrels that everyone understands as a wine barrel until 
really in the last 40 really or 50 yeah, years, after really recently, World after the Second World War. And that style suddenly took off, but people are starting to rediscover that these wines can be amazing made out of large casks because there's that freshness and lightness. And by the way, for a bond reference, does anyone know what the <laughs> M Pinot, the M for the Pinot I was referring to stands for? You're not going to Anyone? Money Penny. Money Penny. There you go. Thank you, Casey. Casey Murphy got it. Money Penny. Sorry. Easy bait. <laughs> there we go. Very good. It was anyway, a log. Sorry, I digress. But the point is, is that the, 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 the <laughs> so we're losing the audience here. Um, but the but the large casts give it uh, a, a space, right? Yeah, and it's, I mean, oak always plays a part in the flavor and the aromatic profile of a wine, for sure. Yeah. But yeah. Um, the casts still do that without overwhelming the fruit, I guess, yeah. and the purity of the fruit, really. So it's, it's kind of like a definition of the future of our estate Pinot Noir. Indeed. Before you move on, um, how long we have a question. In, in barrel or cask before how long in barrel or cask? Yeah. yeah. Before so, going in. Okay. Uh, I was actually just writing this stuff up for our colleague Jennifer. Um, and this is actually a 16 month program. Doesn't mean it's always going to be that way. Uh, I think we're going to probably shorten that a bit. Um, but this year it happens to be a 16 month program. Yeah. Yep. And is it with the estate? Is it still about what's the, what's the percentage of new oak to uh, neutral oak question. in relationship? It's uh, less than 20, less than twenty percent, like fifteen percent of new oak overall. So I remember, like early on with yeah. our Pinot Noirs, we were yeah. doing almost thirty percent new oak, yeah. all medium to medium plus barrels. Um, <clears throat> but we're transition. We've been transition. Actually, we've been lowering that consistently over yeah. the last five years. So um, it's really about fifteen percent in this year of new, okay. of new oak. <clears throat> this is. Everybody out there gets to hear the question, but I'm really interested for just for myself. This is a selfish question, but how does that, how is that reflected that time? Um, historically, we've been in these smaller barrels. Now we're moving to yeah. this larger vessel. How is that, how do we, how, how is that going to be expressed in that wine, that transition? Um, from, from like small barrels, from to small, barrels. from small, bar some, from yeah. small barrels at 15% new yeah. to large cask at, one two years yeah oh uh it's just like what slow, should we expect well first of all like small small barrels are usually toasted and uh these large casks are not to, or they're just minimally toasted uh there's not like a serious uh charring of the inside of the oak so flavor is not really being extracted in uh a cask it's more of like an oxygen exchange so the wines are preserved for a long time in these bigger casts, um, and there's not a lot of charriness, I guess. In, so that in, in that the barrel, in the wine. So that <laughs> antioxidant component of Hungarian oak that Peter talked about yep. in our last Zoom is, is perfectly alive and wild. Right enough. there, got yeah. it. So for those of you that don't know what we're talking, <laughs> for those of you who think we're just rambling, um, there is actually an antioxidant uh, quality to. Uh, to well, oak in general, but uh, Hungarian oak has a, 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 a an effective amount of it. And uh, essentially, when you have your wine inside of that barrel, if it is a new oak barrel, that will actually absorb oxygen out of it, and it actually um, <clears throat> works to cre create a, a more preserving nature uh, for that wine as it's as it's in in the barrel. So, and and it, the fact that it's just a larger volume too, like larger volume wine, a larger, a larger volume of wine doesn't oxidize as quickly as a small yeah. volume of wine. Yeah. And all of that means freshness and more the glass. freshness in the glass and the liveliness that, I mean, I, I think it's really we're all like right here. Yeah. <laughs> and by the way, antioxidants make you live longer. So the more you drink, the longer you're going to live is more or less. Is that not? So uh, like it should I be a glass of Pinot and then there's a little bit of those things out there. <laughs> cool. So was the was the Poseidon Estate 2019 made in the smaller barrel or in the, the bigger, larger? So cast? the question, is, yeah. Go so the question is, was the 19 uh, Estate Pinot Noir made in uh, 225s or in in the tank? That was and the the it's a mix basically. It's a blend of cask and the smaller barrels. And now we're moving on to the bench Pinot Noir, the 2019 also. Also a new label, really cool one too. Again, Arpa's going to take that a little bit later. Uh, the whole 
history of that project. Genesis project. project. Yeah, genesis yeah. of that project. The genesis. I is that a Bond reference? A... Is that a Bond? I don't know. I hope. Is there a Bond reference? Anyone is the Genesis? Name, is the name of a music music group. I don't know. <laughs> Um, so tell us about the bench. By the way, so, I'm just going to say this wine is phenomenal. And I'm going to tell. And we're not biased. And we're not biased, but <laughs> every now and then Alex makes an incredibly great wine. His other wines are, you know, okay. But no, seriously, <laughs> this is really, uh, this is, I, I think, I mean, all your 15 wines, years making wine. Here. It is Alex's 15 year anniversary this week. Can we just celebrate that? Cheers. Cheers. Cheers to Alex, you, Alex. Cheers. Cheers. Cool. Thanks. Another standing ovation. Another standing ovation. <laughs> we have celebrated Alex all week because it's his 15 I know. year anniversary. It's a little heavy handed, but um, I free, I'll take it. I'll soak it in while it's, well, while it's, it's here. still fresh. Um, but this is a really, I mean, I think this is phenomenal wine. I think this, there's something about this 2019 bench that I just think is over the top. And can you, I mean. Uh, again, it's the, it's the fact that it's so lively, fresh. Um, not overdone with oak. It's, uh, I feel like it's a true, true expression of Pinot Noir. Um, it's hard to define what that exactly is, but there's like an earthiness. I, I feel like you can taste the air from walking, you know, in Poseidon Vineyard. Um, again, not heavy handed with oak, a mix of larger uh, barrels and, uh, and it's, it's actually a single clone. This is the Martini clone that's grown throughout our, our vineyard uh, that was planted. What, I, don't know. I mean, it was, it, was it, was, it was planted in 73, but then replanted in, in the, the late 90s. 90s. Yeah. Yeah. Late 90s so so uh, this is actually, the bench has always been a barrel selection uh, or a lot selection uh, from the seller, from the vintage uh, that's expressive, the best expression of Pinot Noir for that vintage. The only problem with this wine is there's only 210 cases of it. So that's the only Sorry. real yeah. We We did yeah. not have a big 2019 vintage. So yeah, yeah there's limited quantities. And, but um, it's a wonderful it. wine. Yeah, it's incredible. And how do you guys think it's going to develop over time? What do you think it will make it be? Interesting. Uh, well, yeah, I was going to say. Uh, so the question was, how, how, how will it develop over time? When yeah. will it peak? When, yeah, when will it peak? Um, there's, there, there's, well. <laughs> I'll limit it to only three answers. No, I'll limit it to two answers to that question. The first is, um, uh, I think the best thing about wine is 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 not a peak. It's the the it's the travel along the route. It's not the destination of oh, this wine has arrived. Kind of like life. It's good. Answer. Sure, sure. Good yeah, answer. thank you. But I mean, for me, that's what I enjoy most about wine is I try it and I think wow, I can't wait to see what this tastes like. And then I try it again and I, and I say the same thing. And it's not until, like you could call the peak kind of the disappointment really, because that's the point where you're like, it isn't gonna get any better than this. Mm -hmm. and, and it's then you're looking back and you're like, boy, I could have enjoyed it even more all of these times that I tried it previously. So anytime that I find something that I think is compelling or interesting, or the first time I try it, I know I want to taste it again. I buy multiples of it and I try and taste it along the way. So I'm in that sense, not the right guy to That's ask. a really good answer, Devin. Yeah, thanks, thanks. I, every once in a while, um, I got one of those. It's really uh, interesting <laughs> when I think about it. Yeah, so it's for me, long, but I'm it's not the, good. Yeah, everything <laughs> with me is that way. Um, <laughs> I'm not the right guy to ask about the exact right time to drink it because I'm going to tell you every day until it's gone and then come and see me and get more. <laughs> um, but in answer to your question, in contrast to previous vintages of the bench where they've been a little bit more structured, a little bit more brooding, a little heavier, um, and they would show well right out of the gate and then they'd have this kind of funky adolescence for a couple years totally. and then they'd show up after five years and their five to eight years, they'd be glorious. This is something different. I think that this is something, you know, really beautiful now. I mean, it's lovely and it's only been bottled maybe what, a month ago, maybe less than maybe five weeks ago. February, I'm trying to think, 17th or 12th, 12th. February 12th yeah. was when this went into the bottle. So a it's ago. a real, it's, I mean, by all um, accounts, it is a young wine, but it's drinking amazingly well. And I think that that's really this new direction that we're going in is, is, fresh and bright and 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 it's meant to be consumed. So does it have enough acid to age? Absolutely. Another three to five years? Absolutely. But what you're getting out of it now is is truly is, is lovely. Well it's interesting because I always think about my relationship with the bench, Pinot particularly, because 
I actually was, you know, I try all our wines, of course, and the benches were the ones that exactly did that, which is they went through these teenagers. And two nights ago, Wednesday night, I opened up the 2014 bench. So if anyone has a 2014 bench, six years later, seven years later, it's fantastic. And, but I know it went through the teenagers and I think it'll be even more fantastic in a couple of years. So I think between now and 2025 or 26 or 27, it's gonna be outstanding. So if you have any of our benches from let's say 2012 through 2017 or 18, those are great in like now or a half a decade from yeah, now. And 12, 13, 14. The question is, sure. And so the way to think about it, that's an interesting way to think about it because it's like, it's like being, it's like, this is, I'm sorry to use this analogy, but it's like the stock market. Everyone's like, well, buy at the, you know, being in the peak. Like, there's no peak. There is just being mm -hmm. in transition. This, it's just yeah. a time you want to be in it. You can't ever call the peak of a wine, or you can't call the peak, right? And here you thought you were just asking a simple question. Sorry, we digress. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, let's look back. Like, how would you compare these wines to, to the last three or four vintages of, you know, coming out of the market? How would we compare these wines now to the last? three or four vintages coming off of the property. Um, well, I, I kind of hit on it with, they were, they were richer. They were, um, uh, you know, uh, more, I, I use the word, the term brooding. Um, I was waxing a little bit, but they were certainly, um, you know, uh, deeper in color, mm -hmm. um, more pronounced in their, in their oak aromatic. They were a um, like a spice, a spicier. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and an earth the, the earthier and spicier elements that are um, oak derivative were were heavier. Um, and this is more like earth and spice purely from the fruit. I feel like I feel like these are brighter and fresher. Mm -hmm. Fresh is the word that keeps coming to mind. It's it's really nice, really nice acidity, crisp and fresh, and um, it makes me want to ever so slightly chill them, um, and then force myself to only have one glass. So there's a viticultural issue <laughs> over that we've had over the last few years too, which is we've actually replanted Primo's Hill. So what's the Pinot that we have that's missing from here? It is Pinot's Hill, which many of you may know as our single block, single hill, seven acre hill um, uh, project. The one that, that I that actually fight everybody off when they come to buy it. Comes to buy it. So we don't have enough of it. And we didn't make it in 20. 19 and did we make it in 20 no we made it in 2018 18. we didn't make not it in 17. 2019 and we didn't make it in 17 and we're not gonna make it in 20. Oh, no. so that's tough because we just have to replant that part of the vineyard and um we miss it i mean i miss it we miss it it's actually the first wine that michael tarian uh, uh and peter made together in the late 90s uh from Primo's hill so it's like a real it's really close to our heart uh, some of you guys will remember that as Cosmer and Blaise. Mm. Um, and it's missing. And it's like... It's but, but it's coming back. But it's coming back. And we, we've got the hill being replanted, some really cool yeah. new clones, more uh, modern cl clones, I guess. Yeah. Uh, back in those days, in Pomar. the 90s, Pomar. in the 90s, it was planted to uh, French Dijon clones that yep. Uh, yep. everyone five, was planting six, seven, at the time. Six, and five. now it's like we've taken the opportunity because the the... The vineyard peaked and now we're taking the opportunity to rethink what it is what, what is it that we want to plant that yep. that will do better in um uh, and that with with clones that are better suited for the environment so yep. yeah it, that, that, and the goal is again to do a primos hill pinot noir yep. um it's going to take a couple years and uh but we're it's going to be stick fantastic. with us yeah. stick yeah. with us it'll be really good <laughs> yeah stay tuned question another um, question uh, Service temperature. Um, it's interesting. Our pot and Peter and I, I, this this has been discussed. Like the French like to say about the Americans that we drink our whites too cold and our reds too warm. Um, that is that saying is tossed around and from on my side of the business pretty regularly in tasting rooms and, and tasting experiences. Um, I, uh, you know, I don't disagree with the, the French overall in that regard. Um, and I think it's okay to, to I think the, the recommendation that I would have is if you store it in a, as, at cellar temp, whether you have a wine fridge or you have a cellar, um, that's a great temperature to take, take, a, take, take a Pinot out. 
Uh, if you don't have the luxury of that, I, I would say throwing throwing your bottle of Pinot into your, not literally throwing, but gently setting it in your refrigerator for um, 20 minutes, half an hour maybe, um, and then pull it out five or 10 minutes before you want to serve it. I think that that does, that, that does something positive to, to the wine. I think it's I okay. I always do that. 30 minutes <clears throat> in the fridge before I open any, any red wine, really. It just cools it down to cellar temperature if it's not already there. Because there's, I, Pinot is a little bit more flexible in that regard. Uh, I mean, with Cabernet in particular, boy, if you don't have it cool enough, like if it gets a hot day or, or that, or you've left it in the back of your car on the way to your friend's house for a barbecue, and then you pull it up, boy, I don't even want to taste it. It's some, it just, all you get is the alcohol. It's just, it's just hot and tannic. Um, Pinot's a little bit more forgiving in that regard, but that doesn't mean it tastes, you're not getting the most out of it. Um, you don't want to cook it. Um, you want to slightly chill it. Talk about the label a little bit. Sure. Oh, one James. Question. Question. Oh. Just one, question. one more question. Hold on. Hold we, on. Yeah. I'm sensing some Bond references. Anyone know there's only been one Bond joke on the whole oh, thing? There are a whole bunch of puns in there. Oh, oh, oh okay, what are they? Okay. You have okay. to tell us. But, but everybody else is. Everybody else They're enjoying it in the so, chat. You enjoy. Um, hey, what's in the rabbit hole now? Or is it for your eyes only? <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. What's in the rabbit hole now? Or is it for your eyes only? Oh my God. <laughs> I, wow. I, we could say a couple things. Go ahead, then say a couple things. Do you want to say them? Do you want to? Do you want me to say them? Or well, you... it's up to you. No, no. Do you, you know what's in the rabbit hole? The rabbit hole is is no is one feeling knows like what's in the rabbit hole. No, yeah. No one's in the. No one knows. So I, I'll tell you something about, about the rabbit hole. About the rabbit hole. <laughs> So, so, I talk about the rabbit hole, like so I, I'll tell you something about the rabbit hole right now that, that it has, has nothing specifically to do with the, the bottlings that we, we have coming, but that I think is exciting. And if you are taking the time to join us on this, then you should take the time to at least check this out on our website and, and maybe consider joining us in the rabbit hole. Um, we are producing uh, uh, an experience here in our cellar, which we're calling, you know, go down the rabbit hole. And it's an opportunity to taste things that are in process that have definitely not even seen a bottle yet. And then also taste some things that have just hit the bottle and then taste some things that have been in a bottle for a while. So it's an opportunity um, to try some things that we may not even ever put into mass production. It may not ever be seen by wine club or mailing list or- Or, or, should, or it should ever be seen. Right, and, and, and I think that that's an important part of what the rabbit hole is to us. It's, a, uh, it's an opportunity to keep the passion up it's an opportunity for us to be engaged in new techniques and to not be afraid of taking some risks. And then when those come out in, uh, whether it's hilarity or, or positive surprise, um, we want to share those with you. So, And by the way, the first rabbit hole is April 1st, April Fool's Day. And it's actually happening, but it's sold out. <laughs> no, it's sold, sold out. It's sold yeah. out. Um, but we're going to do it the first Thursday of every month. So it's, so you can spot that. You can spot that on, on the website. calendar on, on our website. And um that it's a fun experience. It's, you know, maybe an hour and a half um, goofing around in the cellar yeah. and trying things that um, may or may not even see a label. So it's a, it's a really fun opportunity. And if you're even remotely interested, come and check it out. Come see me. And by the way, that is part of our Obsidian Wine Company adventures that doesn't launch. I'm going to let everyone in on the know because you're with us. You're spending your Friday with us. We really appreciate that. Um, it launches on Tuesday. So on Tuesday, we're going to launch this uh, City Wine Company Adventures. It's been sort of in soft launch. It's on our website, but Rabbit Hole or Down the Rabbit Hole is one of those little adventures you can do with us. So fun we stuff. Are, to come we are all us. vaccinated. I want to just tell you, we're, <laughs> we're all fully vaccinated, which is why we get the chance of not wearing uh, a mask. Um, and uh, we are excited about the spring. We're excited about the the new 21 and the rest of this decade. It's going to be vaccination is not a requirement, fun. though. For it's not, joining not us. a requirement. No. It's not a requirement. Yeah, it should be mentioned. Um, it's that, not a requirement. Not, but the adventures are geared towards social distancing, correct, and correct. and and they are. We're not going to. As we're not we, going to get as together. We throw and, spit on each other. I just want to like. <laughs> we're not getting together, tasting wine and licking doorknobs. Just so you know, <laughs> that's not that's not on the, that's not on the website. Not on the website. Cool. So hopefully that. Okay. Oh, so what's the next one that's coming out? So the yeah, sure. so the next release is. Boy, there was a question. Yeah, there was. Yeah. Now you know. Welcome to my world. Well, Casey's <laughs> working on a vermouth. Uh huh. The, the pair of blonde, I was going to say the pair of oh, blonde. No, I think and, the and question Masha. was next year's rabbit hole. Oh, next year's? I thought it was the next one to be released. Is it the next one? <laughs> <that's released? laughs> it's it's Revol both. revolving door. So yeah. the May one, there's a pair blanc that's on the website, which is a mashup between uh, Sauvignon Blanc, which is what grows in uh, Lake County, and also pear, which is the agricultural roots of Lake County. It's my favorite fruit. This is actually an idea that Michael 
Terry and uh, my partner had uh, to put those two together. And then a wine called Mashlash, which is a piquette. Uh, so stay tuned for that. But in the rabbit hole, this we're looking at vermouth and there's a carbonic, there's a couple of different- fun. Carbonic Pinot. We're also carbonic talking about Syrah. maybe like a, a, an, a, a, a dark, a red sparkling Syrah. Red sparkling Syrah. Yeah. So we're, we're gonna have fun, stick with us. They're gonna be yeah, fun. A lot of fun. Challenging wines. Challenging. <laughs> um, why don't we- Another question, question okay. as a segue. So, oh, oh, perfect. perfect. Can you guys talk about the wood round on the table in front of Oh, oh there it is. Well, there that, we thank you for that oh, question. Whoever asked that, that sounds question. loved. That was a <laughs> loved <laughs> question. Who asked that question? Robert Johnson in Chicago. Oh, wow. Well, Robert thank you. Welcome. Welcome, Robert. Um, so, this is something we're really excited about, actually. Um, last year was a difficult year, as everyone knows, and we took the time to be a little creative, I guess, is maybe the best way to say it. As you can see, little. these wines are no longer in our orange and white label um, with the like the view of the sea on it um, that my our father uh, uh, nicely called the, a bucket of dead fish, I think you referred to it. Um, but you know, it's not- Sounds like a compliment. Uh, but why don't you- <laughs> That was a compliment, right? From your dad, think, yeah, that was, was a compliment. More family compliment. <laughs> Good to chew up. Thank you, Nicholas. Uh, this picture. We'll so love here, you too. <laughs> here is what we did. So we decided that at the end of the day uh, in 2020, there's nothing more fun than doing an art project. And so we took these cuts and cross cuts of trees that uh, from Tokai. Uh, so if you look at your screen on the left side, I think it's on your left side. Those are, that's a, I counted the tree rings on this. I actually have it right in front of me. That is 95 years old, but you can count up yourself. Um, and then we took cross cuts on the right hand side of sort of tree branches. And if you go to the next slide, JJ, we took out a sander and this is Jacques. He's our South African designer. He's a wonderful guy. Uh, Peter on the left uh, and then Scooter, my dog on the below the table. And then we took a blowtorch to these things. And anytime you take a blowtorch, particularly in the middle of COVID, uh, uh, it's a lot of fun and you start blowtorching wood. That's Casey Grable on the left. He is our production director and made the Peshka, made the rabbit hole wines that you know or that you had. And, and he was with us, he was with us in February. He was with us live at, live at in February. And then uh, we basically, uh, if you look at the next slide there, JJ. So what we did was once, once you carbon, you burn these, carbonize. You take, carbonize, yeah, thank you. You take a wire brush and you, br you brush out the softwood and um, then suddenly you can see the ridges and the, the growth rings, which is just absolutely beautiful. And there's one other thing you can see is the rays of the tree. I don't know if you can see those big uh, lines that go off the center of the tree. And coopers, all of our coopers that we work with in our cooperage in Hungary, they know that if you cut a stave wood across some of those rays, you end up getting a leaking barrel. So that's uh -huh. really how you cut a tree into, uh, or turn a tree into a barrel is to make sure you don't cut across those lines because otherwise you get a leaking barrel. Then we took some inks, this beautiful ink that Jacques brought. He's a, he was an art student before he was a designer. We inked him up. And then the next thing we did, we took this beautiful French uh, cotton paper, 100% cotton, although it should have been Hungarian cotton paper really, if you think about it. <laughs> tisk, um, tisk, but tisk. there you go. Probably was. And we all got to do this and we put that <laughs> other video too, JJ, and basically pressed down the paper, the cotton paper onto these trees. And the coolest part about this project um, was that we ended up with this, which is, and you can unshare that for a second, JJ, just so, so everyone can see this. So this is one of the prints we made. This is a you know, beautiful piece of art. We will actually have this in our tasting room and we'd love to, people ask us like, can I get that from my, my living office. room or office or, or, or wherever, but Wine it's cellar. gorgeous. Um, and this is a representation in art of a tree that was planted by, you know, really the grandfathers and great grandfathers of the Cooper we work with, which was super, super cool. And here's another shot of that. Um, and this is one of the cross branches and we have, you know, a bunch of different ones. Uh, and then the beauty is that Jacques took these things and turned them into our labels. And so we just thought it would be a better representation. So here's a piece, that piece of wood uh, that uh, has the grains on one side. This is actually one of the, the presses we made. This is one of the things we made. So we just, we just fell in love with this idea that we could actually represent 
uh, a tree because at the core of what we do is we create a glass of wine from a tree that was planted in 1910. So to show that on the label, okay. and you can actually feel it on the label. Obviously, yeah, you can textured. because you can. It's textured. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. So you can you can count the cool. grains if you'd like. But anyway, we're super excited about it, and <laughs> and it, it it presents for us an evolution. You know, we used to have Poseidon Vineyard and Poseidon Ridge, and now we just have a Poseidon Wine Company, and this is now Poseidon Estate, the bench, and Primo. So we're super excited about that, and it was so fun. And it was artistic and creative and I don't know, it's a good time. The other thing that I would mention that you might notice is that the, the bottles, no, they're new bottles, so oh. slightly different shape, but they also don't have foils on them. So the capsule at the top, we're no longer using those. Don't, um, don't return them to the winery, please. If they don't <laughs> Can I get a capsule bottle? Um, but, but one of the things <clears> we <throat> realized, like, why have a capsule? It just adds weight, adds shipping weight, um, and from an extra. And from a sustainable or ecologically friendly perspective, um, that's probably of the packaging, the least uh, earth friendly part of it. And um, the most chemicals and 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 the most processing that goes into that. So by by removing that portion of it, we don't actually change the wine. And and in our opinion, we don't change the aesthetic aesthetic of the the packaging. But we are in some small way moving the needle in the right direction in terms of what we should or shouldn't do. Um, you know, from a sustainable side of things. Well, and ironically, it didn't serve any purpose. It's like it's usually you know it's it's a finisher. It does. It's not like a cork which keeps the wine in the bottle. It's not like a label which tells you what the wine is, and it's not like a bottle which actually holds the wine. <laughs> All those three things actually make a difference. A capsule <laughs> doesn't necessarily. So, um, anyway, so there you go. Mm. That's pretty much the story. Questions, questions, questions on the new look and the new feel to go with the new look and feel and taste and flavor of the of the Pinots. Say yes. <laughs> Any Bond jokes? Anyone? A view to a kill? <laughs> Anything? <laughs> Doctor, no. <laughs> there you go. There's one there for you. you. I did one. 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 Mm -hmm. I tried. Cool. Man with the golden gun? No, there's nothing there. We're good? Yeah. Good. Well, thank you thank very you. much Thanks for... Thanks, everyone, for joining. Yeah. So next, so, yeah. we have... April 16th, be there, be square for our... Um, Baykeeper San Francisco and Rosé for the Bay. Um, yeah, that's like the fourth <clears throat> version of yeah. Pinot Noir right it's here. It's yeah. right in there. Yeah. And we'll be here with uh, Peter Molnar with Arbot's brother, um, who's very involved in Baykeeper San Francisco. And it's definitely a cause that's near and dear to our heart, obviously, because we're producing this Rosé and all the proceeds are going to that. So um, please join us uh, both in and picking up a bottle of that rosé and enjoying it, as well as is tuning in uh, next month for the and next. And then in season. May, if you guys are interested in the rabbit hole, that's the third uh, Friday of May, whatever day that is. Whatever day that is. is, third Friday. So we hope to be a little part of your Friday evening if you're on the East Coast, or your Friday afternoon if you are here on the West Coast. We are delighted that you join us every uh, month for this. Really fun for us to do. I just want to say congratulations and thank you to Alex for his 15 years. He is an incredible <laughs> uh, winemaker and um, we are thank highly you. appreciative of the work that he has done for us. Thank and you. you guys are the beneficiaries of it. Douglas, thank you for hosting again. Yeah, thanks host for being with here. the most. Uh, host with some. Something. <laughs> thank you very much. Have a great night. Great weekend. Take care.